Melissa in New York City starts us off this hour. Hey, Melissa, how are you? Hey, thank you very much for taking our call. It's been much appreciated. Absolutely. How can we help? Okay. I have some, um, I have some, you know, from I'm exciting, but my husband's going to be retiring. And he has the final papers to fill out. And I figured you're the best person to ask this question. He's being offered $1.6 million to retire or his pension payments. And I really don't know which way to go because there's so many options. So a lump, sum, a lump sum on the pension is 1.6. Well, correct. So he can get a $1.6 million correct payout. Lump sum, on his, pen, lump sum on his pension. Correct. Okay. That would be that. That's not, that's, or, not a, that's not a retirement package that they're paying him compensation to retire. That's no. his pension. Correct. Okay. All right. So that will have to be rolled over right into a, um, you know, like a retirement, you yes. know, you know, you, you get it. So it defers. Yes. So no, no tax implications right. right away. Right. Or he has an option to take like he can has options like 20, uh, 50, 75 or 100 percent for survivorship. Right. For so you or he, for or for your heirs beyond you. Yeah. Correct. OK. So obviously he can only choose one. So okay. I'll be, I'm and obviously he would pick me, but okay. um, he would he would offer the hundred percent survivorship, mm-hmm. if anything. Mm-hmm. Um, you know they make it a, they make it very attractive. The, the it only survives one generation pay. past you, though. After that, it's gone. Yes, sir. That is correct. Yeah. So ultimately, the money either evaporates or it stays in your family. Correct. It stays. It only stays in your family if you take the lump sum and you roll it to an IRA. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So you take it. Okay. And how was the pension payments? Because I'm just yeah. so scared with the market and what's yeah. going on. And, yeah. you know, my husband taught me I'm crazy not to take, for not to take the lump sum. Yeah. Take because the lump we sum. can make money on the lump sum. No. Go back you know. and sit down with your investment advisor. If you don't have one, get with a smart investor pro and sit down. Right. And look at how old are you guys? He's 55 and I'm 50. Okay. And look at the market, look at the market for the last 40 or 50 years. Okay. And you can even, there are some charts that are interesting to look at, which will help you with your nerves. Okay. That, that have the worst day. Here's what happened in, on Black Monday in 1987. Here's what happened uh, when the market went down at the end of the bush, beginning of the Obama administration, 2008. Here's what right. happened after 9-11. Here's right. what happened spring of COVID. Yes. Okay. Which, mm-hmm. as an example, it went down dramatically for 57 days. Right. Or went down, down dramatically, and it took 57 days to recover. We did not know that when mm-hmm. because we did not know what COVID was going to do to our economy. Right? Correct. But the only way you would assume that you would not ride this roller coaster out from the bottom back up would be you would have to make the assumption that the economy is entirely collapsing. Same in 2008. Mm -hmm. Same in 9-11. Same if you go back into the Carter administration. Same if you go back to, here's a weird one, in the late 1950s, the stock market shot way down when the Russians launched the first satellite and beat us into space, Sputnik. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Actually, you can see a stock market change on these geopolitical issues. Uh-huh. The, uh, the assassination of Osama bin Laden sees a right, spike upward, right. you know, and so uh-huh. on. So these are these are issues that don't have anything to do with finance, but that end up driving the market on a short term because the market is also driven by emotions. So it helps you to look right. at that and it helps you to go, okay, how long did it take to after the planes hit the towers and the stock market was literally closed for two days because the Wall Street is right there on that tip of Manhattan. That's and then right. when it finally mm-hmm. did reopen, it tanked. It dropped 500 points in 20 minutes. Right. I remember that. I remember yeah. it was yesterday. What most people don't remember is is that in 47 days it returned. Right. And better than ever. Exactly. And shot the, and, and never looked back. Uh, it went down right. to 6,500 in 2008. It's at 35,000, the Dow is, yeah. this week. Right. So, no, you're right. Yeah, you've got yeah. to get those numbers kind of down in your heart or you're going to freak out with this idea. Now, right. once you've <laughs> done that, once you've done that, then here's what you're going to discover. The average 
on the stock market return since it began is a little right. over 11, between 11 and 12 percent, depending on how you want to measure it, somewhere in there. Right. This pension is paying out at about 7 percent. Okay. So right. if, you, if you run your pension numbers on the 1.6 right. million, you're going to see 7 percent or thereabouts. Okay. Depending on which survivorship you choice you pick, but that's what that that number of dollars annually on as a return on one point six will be right around there. So you're going to get more money while you're alive in mutual funds, and you're going to get more money when he dies in mutual funds by rolling right. it by rolling it to there. So it, at it, least my children can have it too. Then and it doesn't thing. disappear upon the death. Right. Your children and their right. children's children and their children's children. Here's another yeah. interesting thing. If you don't touch it and you just live off of something else it, right. and you invest it in, in that, it'll double about every seven years. Well, he's got he's got about a million in his 401k plan now. Yeah. So, and that's yeah. in addition so to when the he's, Yeah, if we take 1.6, just talking about this one discussion, you know, it's going to be 3.2 after seven years at 62. At 69, it would be about seven. And at 76, it'll be 14. 14 what? No, million? million. Holy mackerel. No. Yeah, and that all goes to your kiddos and their kiddos' kiddos and so on. Yeah. As long right. as, you know, and 100% of the time it does not go to them if you leave it in this stinking pension. So you take the rollover and you roll it in a direct transfer traditional IRA, which you've already researched, you've already discovered there are no taxes, and you invest it in a good mix of mutual funds. I'm 60. I'm older than you guys. Mine is invested across the four types that we talk about here on the air. One-fourth in growth, growth and income, aggressive growth, and international. All mutual funds that have long 10-year or more track records, all mutual funds that have outperformed the index for the area that they are in, meaning the stock market. So they're doing better than the market on average and have a track record of that. And 100% of that money will pass to my heirs. It will not be left behind with a pension plan. There's very few times, folks, that you won't take the lump sum on a pension, and that's the reason. Because you lose it all when you die. That's it. You get a zero. It's easy math. This is The Ramsey Show.